here to talk about it. That's not what's going to happen next. Shortly will be Jono Finger.
Um, oh, you, we can't really see on the bottom, but there's actually a piano at the bottom of here. This is Dan Menendez, a juggler in Santa Cruz, and he's a piano juggler. You may have seen him, he does like halftime shows and whatnot. He actually bounce juggles on a piano and plays songs. And really fast, amazing songs like Flight of the Bumblebee and stuff. It's fascinating. You can find lots of videos of that online. Um, here's balancing. Balancing on your face if you want to. This is contact juggling. Some of you may have seen this um, at festivals and fairs. Basically, the idea is the ball always is on you. It never, you never throw it. It rolls around. It roll up between your hands and on your limbs and stuff. And you can do it with things that aren't balls. Here's the same guy doing it with a staff on his head. So it's spinning all over his body. This guy is juggling underwater. Um, that's a thing. This guy, Shreed, is really interesting. He's set hundreds of world records. He just, his job is like thinking up obscure records and setting them. This was one of them. Why? Okay, so why would you do this? <laughs> There's this thing called juggling. <laughs> and it's, it's what it sounds like. You jog while you're juggling, and there's a real sport to it. Um, let's see. Here's the Wikipedia entry. Can I scroll down? There's lots of uh, you know records over the years, various things, times, whatnot. You know, it has a history to it. But it's just one of the things people have thought about with juggling. Okay, this is combat. <laughs> so I'll give you, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting video, but to, to give you the, the brief of what it is, it's basically, they're juggling clubs, which are like these sticks, the pins that they're juggling. Everyone juggles three. There's a room full of people. There could be 50 people. You're just juggling clubs, and the last person standing juggling wins. So you, can, you want to take other people out somehow, but you have to keep juggling. Um, that's basically how it works. Now, recently, well, okay, maybe 10 years ago, there's been a, a whole resurgence of um, turning this into like a major league sport where there's teams and jerseys and lots of variations and stuff, uh, headed by this group called the World Juggling Federation, and they do these giant things on CNN, and it's kind of like American Gladiators and whatnot. But you can see what, a, what one looks like. Here's some pictures. Don't get my whole thing out of the arm. Also, I'm going to keep the game. Just trying to find a chance. That's how it's serious. Okay, anyway. Look up combat online. There's endless videos and funny stuff about it. How? Okay, so there's. Um, People have looked at this scientifically. People have written a lot of papers about it. Uh, here's a science paper breaking down um, all sorts of trajectories and cool whatnots. This was written probably in the 80s or something, but there's cool stuff in it. There's a lot of papers on it, actually, just because nerdy people tend to juggle and write papers. Um, which brings me to side swaps. This is kind of the nerdy part of the talk. So, People have been juggling for a long time. We found these pictures in hieroglyphs and whatnot. And um, then there came Red Dock Juggling, which is a news group. I think they're maybe in the 80s or 90s. It was a, you know a news group where enthusiasts get together and talk about juggling stuff, and all over the world. So there was a need for people to be able to transfer their juggling pattern to someone else. So if you want to describe what you're doing to somebody else, you often have to explain in a long paragraph. First, I take my left hand, I throw it here, and da 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 So people were trying to figure out different notations for how to transfer their knowledge. And lots of different things are tried. Uh, here's a state transition diagram, which is very complicated looking. <laughs> Uh, then here's a casual diagram. Uh, this is this is a three ball cascade, which is like a standard uh, one person juggling three balls. So basically, time is that way, and these are your hands, your right hand and your left hand. And what 
what you can see is you're throwing from your right hand to your left hand, and then the next throw will be from your left hand to your right hand, and then from your right hand to your left hand, and then your left hand to your right hand. So I'll show you what this pattern looks like when I'm juggling it, but a cool way to demonstrate this is since time is going that way, it's kind of like having a camera looking down on me while I'm walking forward juggling. Microphone situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this will work. Yeah. Oh, no, that's good. Thank you. Okay, so when you this is this is a pre ball cascade, so it just looks like this. Every hand throws, and you alternate hands. But I'm gonna walk forward. And that much. Okay, so all that notation looked super crazy. It's kind of hard to see what this is. But the cool thing is side swap notation, which is this notation I'm about to explain to you, can capture that entire pattern by this one value, the number three. If I tell someone the number three in break.juggling, they'll know exactly what to do, this three ball pattern. And I'll explain how this notation works. Okay, vanilla side swap. This is just basic side swaps. Generally, it means you have two hands. You alternate throws between your hands, so you wouldn't do two out of the right hand. You do right, left, right, left. And you only have one ball in a hand at a time. So you wouldn't have two. Okay, so the values, the lower the value, the lower the throw is. So one, you're throwing straight across. A two, you're throwing straight up. A three, you're throwing across. A four, you're throwing up even higher, and so on. So what it means is the odd number throws go across, and the even number throws go straight up. Okay. All right, so here's some patterns. The three you saw looks like this. We got a four, four, one. That's a three ball pattern. So fours, remember, are in the same hand. And you have a four, four, one, which is four, four, one. Four, four, one. So you can, you can keep that going. Four, four, one. Wow. Cool. Good. Then you have a four, four, one, three. So that's similar, but it also has a three. So it's four, four, one, followed by a three going across. All right, then we have a 5-1, which would be a higher cross followed by hand across. Now, a lot of these patterns have names for people that don't use side swaps, that's called the shower. Um, a 5-3-1 would be a high five, a medium three, and a, slow, a low one. So you still got the high five. And the three, which is lower, which would arc right below it. So five, three. And then the five is just five balls continuous. Basically like a three, but at that next level. Wow. <laughs> you. Um, you can make your own side swaps. <laughs> so generally, you can pick any number and just throw it into a generator. There are lots of them online that will show you what the patterns look like. 
Uh, you can't really see this num this string up here, but it says eight six one seven. It's a big string of numbers, and then the program will actually wrap it up. Yeah. Now here's here's some of the things you can see. How do you entertain a juggler? Like this doesn't look that cool to someone if they were just juggling on the street. But now that you know a little bit about side swaps, that's kind of interesting. You know, there's this. This one that shoots back below on the bottom. You have these high ones that go on the side. Yeah. Okay, here's a property. The odd number of steps means it's a symmetrical pattern. So when we talked about a 441, it's symmetrical, so it goes back and forth. But a 4413, which is an even amount of steps, is not symmetrical. So it's always going to cycle in the same way. So notice when I throw the 3, that medium height one, it always goes from my left to the right. Uh, jugglers tend to favor symmetrical patterns because whatever we do with one hand, we'd like to do with both. And another, and the, another property or theorem is the number of the balls in the pattern is actually the average of the throws. For example, the three pattern, the average is three, so that's three balls. And for this one on the bottom, the five three, the average is four, so it's four balls. So you don't actually have to tell someone how many balls are in the pattern, it's just known by the numbers itself. And you can also tell things about the pattern, like you can tell if something is a valid pattern. For example, is this a side swap? Six, three, one? Well, the average is not an integer, so it's not a side swap. You can't juggle that. And if you plug that into that program, it'll say that's not a side swap. Okay, chocolate side swap. This is just to say there's a million other things you can do with side swaps. I just showed you some of the basic rules. Um, there's synchronous, um, Multiplexes, composites, orbits, generations. I, actually, I'm not a ball juggler, so I don't know what a lot of the stuff is. But um, let's see, multiplexes are interesting because it basically means when you throw from one hand multiple balls. Right? So I'm taking from my right hand and it's splitting between my hands. And that makes lots of interesting patterns like this. So that's, that's kind of five balls and a three ball time with the multiplex. Thank you. Um, let's see, orientations. Yes, synchronous is when you throw two balls at the same time. That can do lots of cool stuff too. Um, adding hands. Okay. So you can, we were talking about two hands the whole time, but you can add oh, more hands or you can add more people with more hands. <laughs> Um, here's, here's a video of, of something called social side swap, which goes very fast, but it gives you an idea and shows you what the numbers are on the top left. Um, so you can see all the variations people have thought of. a no though. Uh, passing is when you have multiple people that are passing with each other. Kind of like the social side swaps, but it's often notated a little differently. Because you start to hit a wall with, a, with, with side swaps when you add a lot of people. Okay, so that casual diagram we saw before, this is a multi-juggler casual diagram, where instead of representing hands, we're representing people. So on the top you have one juggler, the bottom you have a different juggler. Um, selves are kept in the same row. So you're, this is where one person passes from their left hand to their right hand, which is just a regular pass to yourself. Passes always cross. So this is, I'm passing from my right hand to their left hand. 
which since we're facing each other, they're, they're, when I pass from my right hand, it's passing straight because their left hand is straight across from me. Yep. Okay, so this is, this is a common passing pattern called a four count. If you were to go to another country, didn't speak the language, and you want to just start juggling passing with someone, this is a pattern they will do. Um, it is the standard circus pattern for everyday use. So let's see what's going on in this pattern. Um, so we have two jugglers here, right? The right hand is passing to the left hand of the other person. And then four beats happen, and then let's just focus on the one juggler at the top. He passes with his right hand, uh, one, two, three, then passes with his right hand again, and keeps passing with the right hand. Same with the guy on the bottom. Right hand, right hand, right hand. So everyone's passing with the right hand and receiving with their left hand. And all of these in the line are selves. So here's kind of what it looks like. Uh, it's a little cut off, but you can see that he's always passing with his right hand. This guy is always passing with his right hand on this side and receiving with his other hand. They're both doing the same thing. So pass, two, three, four, pass, two, three, four, pass, two, three, four, pass. Yeah. All right, things start getting very exciting when you apply other rules here. Um, this is a simul squirrel, which is um, more complicated because you're actually passing from the same hand at the same, from multiple hands at the same time, so things start stacking up. People are catching with the same hands at the same time, so it's, it's kind of hard to read some of these diagrams. Uh, the, here's a why not popcorn feed, which is, this has three jugglers in it. What can we see is going on here? People are always passing to the guy next to them. This guy is not passing to this guy. Uh, there is, some of these selves are interesting because this is a regular self from the left to right. This is a, a self from their, per, their right to their left, but it's over more time. So what does that mean? It means that you're throwing a really high self. So you could be throwing a double or a triple in the air and waiting for it to come down. Meanwhile, you're throwing this self. Um, and then there's some backwards things. Yeah, what not? Okay. Th this is a video of me passing, actually, at the Bay Area Circus Festival uh, last year, which you guys should come to and check out. Um, it was at Alameda High School this year. And what's going on here that's interesting? So there are no selfs in this pattern. All passes, every time I catch a club, I'm throwing it back from both of my hands. So I'm not just passing with my right, I'm also passing up with my left. Uh, both of us are doing all passes, no selfs. Uh, there's eight clubs here instead of six. Um, and they're in, our patterns are slightly different in that my throws are high, or no, actually my throws are low and his passes are high. So I'm throwing doubles and he's throwing triples, which makes for this kind of an interesting arc. Okay, okay, so this is um, a multiplex by SJRI. Okay, this, this group, which um, SJRI stands for Stanford Juggling Research Institute. Uh, they're, they're a juggling club in Stanford, and they have actually pioneered a lot of this very nerdy juggling and notation and whatnot. And they made some kind of instructional videos of them figuring out funny patterns. This one's interesting because there's a multiplex and a simul. So here we have three jugglers. This guy is a feeder, so he's passing to these guys. These guys never pass to each other. They're the PDs. And this guy is doing a simulplex, which means he's throwing two out of one hand and one out of the other hand at the same time as the other two. So essentially he's throwing all three clubs at once. And then on the other end, it's very complicated actually catching these because you actually have to catch two at a time and cross hands and do weird wow. stuff. Cool. 
is another pattern that now that you know a little bit about passing, it seems pretty cool, but if you saw on the street, it would look like nothing. <laughs> okay, this, this group is a group from Germany that did um, this thing called takeouts, which is basically like we showed with the feeder before, you have multiple people juggling, and with a, uh, with a feeder, there's usually one person feeding multiple people, but you can actually rotate who the feeder is. And you can do even more interesting stuff. You can actually have someone in the middle taking clubs out, um, putting them in other people's patterns. So it's a little hard to follow, but you get a sense of some of the cool stuff you can do with takeouts. So right now, let's see, this guy's feeding. And now this guy's feeding. Oh, no, that guy's feeding. And now the guy in the back is feeding. And this guy, meanwhile, is doing funny stuff in the middle, but he can walk out whenever he wants. And there's always someone in the middle who's grabbing clubs out. This guy now. You see why, as a juggler, this would be very fun to do? There's a lot of fun stuff in here. Okay, this is, um... Uh, a juggling festival in Madison, Wisconsin called uh, Madfest. And the juggling style that is very popular there is having patterns with many people in it. I think maybe they've set some records with hundreds of people in one giant juggling pattern. And I don't, this isn't very high resolution, but you can get a sense of what's going on. Lots of people juggling. This is actually one pattern. And people are actually moving throughout. It's not a very fast moving pattern, but what's cool is when you have so many people juggling, you find a very easy pattern to kind of cater to everybody instead of doing something very complicated, which means there's time for people to pick up and continue juggling. So you'll see people will drop, but it's okay. Someone will come along and pick up the club and pick up, right, this guy picks it up, they keep going, like nothing happened. And they can set records and stuff. Okay, so here's a, just a recap of some of the stuff in passing we talked about. Oh, I'm not going to talk about all these, but tricks, passing, I didn't even talk about that. That's what you usually see on the street when people throw really high and throw under their leg and stuff. Number passing is when you do a lot of clubs. Like there's just millions of clubs in the air and they're just shooting up very quickly. Uh, let's see, some of them sign with zips. Patterns are when you have more than three jugglers. Static is like when there's just a, feed, a feeder and they're not moving at all. Feeds are when you have one person feeding multiple people. Um, so rotations, you sell takeouts for... Yep, and that's about the end. So I'm going to tell you... Oh, okay, I'm going to tell you a couple of cool things that you could look up later. Site Swaps is a site that's probably been up for 20-something years. Um, it's just basic, basic information like I showed you, but you can start learning how to use it. Passing database, so if you get more into passing, you can actually look up patterns and see how to make new ones. Um, Martin Frost from the Stanford Juggling Research Institute has a good collection of videos. That's like the one I showed you with the Simul. Um, and there's a, this is an interesting video with, um, with the group actually winning like a silver medal at a championship, and they all wear lab coats, and it's very scientific and nerdy. And, at these festivals, I mean, these are jugglers, juggling for other jugglers, so they're not really concerned with dropping, they're more interested in the geeky new patterns. Dropping is encouraged, if you want. Mystery of Manipulation, this is a cool blog site that you can watch people that figure out how to do cool stuff with objects. Like, beyond juggling, uh, people will do things with cigar boxes and make you know, Rube Goldbergs out of dice and all sorts of stuff. But there's lots of interesting juggling stuff now. People are always thinking of new things. Uh, the Berkeley Juggling Club, that's a juggling club here. And they meet on Wednesdays. And it's, they put on that festival, the circus festival. There's actually a lot of juggling clubs in the Bay Area. Actually, most days of the week, you could find a club to go to if you really wanted to. <laughs> Um, the World Juggling Federation, that's the group that put on combat juggling, since I know you guys are into that, you can join <laughs> that, get on that, their list. The International Juggler Association, that's a much older group. They put on the festivals all over the country, and I put my slides on the internet too. 
and that is it. Okay, so any questions? Sure, yeah, so is there a difference between juggling an odd and even number of balls? And there certainly is. Um, with an, it kind of depends on the pattern you're dealing, but with a cascade, which is those standard patterns of, that just are represented as a three or a five, usually they stay crossing, so you're always crossing your throws. Um, a, the standard four ball pattern, your balls often stay in the same place, for example. Okay, so three ball pattern. Four ball, are, are, they're often done um, two in each hand. It looks like maybe they're crossing, but they're not. But of course you can do other patterns, like that one I was doing before where you throw one high and one low, and they do cross. Yep. So when you have more balls, you generally you juggle higher. That's about it. Any other questions? What's the most fun? What's the most fun of juggling? <laughs> um, I I really like club passing. Um, it's there's a, there's a very there's a social aspect to it. You know, when we get together in a club. There's a lot of, you know, we exchange ideas, people will bring books and graph paper, think of new patterns that they thought. Like I said, there's an emphasis on inventing things and trying things out, not so much, um, you know, powering out a million balls on the side. That's fun too, and entertaining if you juggle by yourself, but when we get together, it's good to do social juggling. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, a, I think of it as a sport, it's a lot of like hacky sack, you know, we work on stuff together get better on it, try to invent stuff. So you, uh, you showed sort of the elegance of different patterns. What do you generally think of one of the, one of the freaks? What would juggle swords or chainsaws? Uh, what do I think of the freaks that juggle swords and chainsaws and whatnot? Um, good question. I think a lot of it is very showy. So it doesn't actually necessarily have to be hard. Um, juggling torches, there's a little bit of a rush involved, right, because there's flame going by your face and, you know, when you're doing it at a Burning Man, people are drumming and all this stuff, I'm, I'm sure it's a rush, but there's not, you can't see a lot, so it's not quite as social. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, knife juggling, those aren't often that sharp, though you can juggle sharp knives. I used to have a giant spatula that I would juggle and it was actually really sharp. I cut my leg open with it once. With torches I have burned the hair all off my arms before. Um, yeah. I'm not so into the dangerous juggling, but club juggling can hurt too. I mean, when you learn to juggle clubs, you often bang up your arms pretty good and your face and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, what made me start juggling? So I was maybe nine or ten. Um, I grew up here in Berkeley, and I went to a day camp, like an art camp, and they had a circus class. And I started juggling. They did they do clowning and all that kind of stuff too, if you're into that. But I, I continued with that. I still go to a, another summer camp actually, called Camp One Rainbow. It was run by Lady Gravy, a Berkeley hippie legend. And um, it's all circus all the time. And they do lots of, they do trapeze and tightrope and um, people walk around on stilts and everywhere you go, there's like uh, water fountains that are multiple heights all over camp. So if you happen to be walking around and be 10 feet in the air, there's gonna be a water fountain that's up there for you. <laughs> and you cycling and we play all these combat games and all that stuff all day for weeks. Yep. How many people are 
How many people have I juggled with? You mean at one time? Sorry, say that again. How many? You know, is there a big, large group? What's the largest group you've juggled with? Okay. So the largest group I've juggled with, like in a big pattern? That's hard to say. Maybe a dozen or so. I will say the, um, there's a group that juggles in Castro Valley in the BART station there. And uh, they're very into just pulling people into the pattern at all skill levels, and patterns can get very big. And they're good at accommodating, you know, the, the really good guys in the middle, beating everyone, and the kind of new guys on the outside just having fun. And so patterns can get big, depending on how many people show up. Yeah, and, and that's all for me.